Hi everybody, welcome to uh, lecture 9 for Pi 794 Advanced Quantitative uh, Research Methods. Let me just put this uh, full screen. So in the last lecture I covered confirmatory factor analysis, five structure equation models, and today I'll cover mediation models, five structure equation models, and we'll also point you towards a deep layer exercise for you to complete. As you know, everything is tied into uh, the assignment and after today you should be able to complete the following sections of your uh, assignment for the second assignment. You should be able to complete the section on mediation via structure equation models. When we're getting close to the end, there's just some bits to do about multi-level models and then we're uh, close to finished. Just a reminder about uh, what mediation actually is. Very simply put, we can think of it as a causal paths approach or a sequence of regressions. And I've just put in an example here just to remind you as to how uh, they, this might look like. So why is this useful again? Again, uh, this is something to discuss with your, with your neighbor. So think back to the lecture where we talked about structural equation models and mediation, and hopefully that will drop uh, uh, your memory as to why this is uh, particularly useful. We return back to our hypothetical example. We already did mediations in week six with a hypothetical data set. And if you complete the exercise, you will also remember the uh, mole doors data set. And you will remember that you had some data on body image. And so you should be able to remember the methods yeah, you used, uh, but they were not structural equation models. So talk to your neighbor and or have a look at the worksheet as to the methods we used back then. Now just to recall, this is the data. You can get it from the previous lecture, but it's also uh, here. So if you right click here, then this will take you to the data set. We read in the data set as uh, below. And we have, you remember, we have grades and happiness and we have as a proposed mediator, self-esteem. Now, how would we go about building such a model in uh, structure equation models? So remember that we use Lavan also for confirmatory factor analysis. And again, this is the, uh, the workhorse. And so basically you should remember that this works by testing an indirect effect via the AB path. And this is how we would specify this model, this mediation model. We first specify the direct effect, then the mediators, the indirect effect, and then the total effect. Now to actually run the model, uh, we put it in this and we can put in that we want bootstrap standard errors. And because the output is quite big, uh, I've sent it here to uh, a text file. And I'll just open that up and recall here that I've also asked for standardized coefficients and I asked for fit measures. So I'll just briefly show you that you'll get a large output. So this is some mediation text. Quite a big file. I won't go through all of these, but you recall that we have some measures of uh, fit indices. And you remember that we have AIC and BEC, which will allow for model comparison. And we have a series of regressions and the defined parameters. In particular, this is the uh, product path or the mediation path. We have an estimate, and we also have the, uh, the associate significance tests. And we also have the total effect uh, included there. Okay, so that's sort of the output you can expect from these mediation uh, models. Let's return to the slides. So we can compare it back to, uh, to other methods. So remember that we uh, also used uh, mediation to build a mediation model. And so this should look quite familiar to what, you, uh, what we had before. We put in a seed here to make sure that we have the uh, same output every single time. And then this code should also be familiar because it's something which we've done in the lecture six, if I'm not mistaken. So we specify which one is the treatment and we specify which one is the mediator. We tell it to uh, do bootstrapping and we uh, request 10,000 bootstraps. This is the output which we then get. And this is the average causal mediate effect, the average direct effect, the total effect, and the proportion mediated. So this should look quite familiar, and you can go back over the slides uh, to, uh, to check. 
Now, let's have a look. Oh, what I should highlight here also is that this value is remarkably similar to what we had before. If we go back and look at the text output, we have 0 0.357 here. The standard error is 0 0.08. We can compare that to the output here. We don't have the, uh, uh, the thing printed here, but we can reconstruct it if we want it from this. And you can remember that it's roughly two times the standard error in order to get this 95% confidence interval. So you can reconstruct it here or look at it closer at the output. But it's a highly significant uh, effect, similar to what we have in the Lavan output. Okay, let's put this back to full screen. <laughs> what are the benefits of using this approach versus the mediation approach? So what are the benefits of using the sum approach by Lavan and the mediation approach? We can use model fit statistics to compare different models. And also it's easier if you have multiple mediators and uh, latent constructs. So we could have things which we didn't mention uh, measured directly. So we can basically, if we wanted to combine some of the things which we saw confirm from confirmatory factor analysis together with the mediation model. And perhaps it's also easier to remember that there might be some issues in terms of calculating the significance if you have more than one mediator it's easier to compare models in a structural equation modeling framework compared to when we have this uh, uh, mediation model. So we can build a model with just direct effects. So this is just a simple uh, regression. So this is just the direct effects. In this case, it's called direct model sem. This is the same output that we had before. In this case, I'm calling direct model sem. Again, asking for bootstraps, telling which data to use and printing it to some output and we can then compare those uh, those outputs. Oh, let me just open this. So we can have a look at some direct text. Now we can compare, if we wanted to, we can compare the fit statistics. And in this case, both the AIC and the BEC are substantially lower for this model than for the other model. So perhaps that would lead you to favor the uh, simpler direct effects model compared to mediation model. So have a look, you can compare all these uh, models and you can uh, use them for model comparison. So let's return to the slides. I also want to give you a word of caution. It's quite easy to fool yourself with structured equation models. The author Rex Klein lists no less than 50 ways in which you could fool yourself uh, with structural equation models in his book. Uh, you need quite large data uh, sets in order to uh, uh, test these type of models. And so even a simple model like the mediation model we had already requires relatively large amounts of data. And you can read through the literature and some of the uh, sources at the end in order to, uh, to read further suggestions. But it's not uncommon to have sample sizes in the order of magnitude of 350, 500, 600 uh, respondents in order to estimate these type of models. So if you have very poor data, then uh, you could try and build something, but it's making something out of nothing. And so if there are no baseline associations, then structural equation modeling, whether you're using it for confirmatory factor analysis, or for mediation models is not gonna help you. It's not gonna certainly turn your data into gold. And the other thing, perhaps also relating more to conformity factor analysis, we should be careful. All this is couched in causal language, <coughs> but it, it, it's not necessarily causal in the sense just, just because we make a variable and uh, call it uh, openness to experience doesn't necessarily mean that it, it exists or that it is openness to experience. Similar if we build a path model that doesn't necessarily mean that this model has any bearing on reality. And we could perhaps easily flip around some of the arrows and get quite similar fit statistics. So it's quite easy to fool yourself with structured equation models. So it continues the saga. So you should be careful when you ignore warnings. Some of these are safe, but if you're in doubt, you should really talk to an expert. Some of these are safe to ignore. They just tell you, for example, that there's a different way to fit the model or that you've over or underspecified it perhaps. So some of them uh, might 
just be relatively harmless and some of them might actually point to some of the issues that you've forgotten uh, important variables or you're making something which is entirely nonsensical. Like I said before, just because we can build a model doesn't necessarily mean it has any bearing on reality. We can get models with highly significant paths, but if you're a clinical psychologist, for example, that doesn't necessarily mean it has uh, any bearing on, uh, on reality. That's actually going to help you to improve patients' lives. So we can build a model that fits the data quite closely, but that doesn't necessarily mean it explains a whole lot of uh, variance. And we should be careful in inferring from some of these models that while they might be very good fits to our theories, that they have limited bearing in terms of actually uh, up applied significance, clinical significance, or biological significance in this case. So a, a healthy dose of skepsis is what is needed. Now, just to remind you, we can uh, plot these things as well. We've done these things before. Just to remind you, this is uh, how we can do it with avant plot. Uh, and we take the model and we can specify some of the things, like we can specify that it should be a box. We can specify the font, like the journal specific font, and we can also specify uh, what type of colored arrow should have. Now, this isn't particularly attractive because it's uh, it's top down. So if we want it sideways, we can change lots of things to this. We can change it so it says independent, mediator dependent. We can also, uh, we do that by first specifying the labels, which we then feed into uh, Lavan plot. You can see it's called here. Uh, so again, we're calling the model. We can sort of say which type of model we want. In this case, we're saying it's gonna go from left to right. And again, we can pick whatever font we like, or we can also some of the options for the arrows. We can also add the estimates to this. So this is not really visible on this slide because it's a sort of low res resolution figure for the slide, but we can use some plots if you want to attach the numbers to this. So in this case, you could see the thin line between independent and dependent is sort of reduced because of these mediation effects. So we have an arrow going from independent to mediator with that value on it, and from the mediator to the dependent. And this is, uh, again, the list with the codes. You need to check the uh, the order in which uh, these variables are fed. So that's why I put a hashtag of me to reorganize. So because this is how it's fed into a uh, sample. The command is send paths. We tell it which model to fit. We want standardized uh, effect sizes. We can specify what the eight edges should look like and what the layout should be. We should also specify what type of labels we want. We can say we don't want any intercepts. And this is telling us the style, we, in this case, a reticular action model. And we can say which type of labels it should use. So if you want to find out more, just have a look at the commands of some paths. Now, sometimes journals have very specific styles. A common older style was uh, that output generated by Lizrel, which is a structural equation model. And so you can have a look. And in this case, we've specified that the style should be Lizrel. And for example, it's put some arrows with residuals on the mediator and uh, the dependent and sort of turn some things uh, around. So have a close look at the manual uh, and have a close look if you want to zoom in at uh, the numbers on the graph. So there's also, as always with R, many other ways of, uh, of doing things. So you can make more advanced things. Uh, and I point you to this package here, which uh, uh, uses Java to make some, uh, some nice uh, layouts as well. And I should be careful because not all uh, operating systems necessarily play nice with like using external things like Java or Fortran to uh, build graphs or to do computations. Now, this is an intermezzo. It's back to the future. Uh, this is trying to hone in on your skills of data wrangling. So it's quite common that you will be given a data set and that you first have to do some cleaning. And so this exercise is really built at you trying to hone in some of those skills. So we go back to dplyr and there's an exercise I'd like you to do. And uh, we're gonna use, first of all, the tidyverse package. And then I would like you to load the data set 
which is called empty cars from the datasets packages. And so if you reach those steps, I would like you to then complete the following. I'm not going to read through all of these, but these are six uh, steps to do exercises. And so you're going to have to learn some new functions. Oh, going way too far ahead. And when you're done, uh, please hold off for clicking, but you can find the results when you click uh, click there. So that's the intermezzo, really to try to get you further to grips with your data handling skills. And I hope you uh, you have a go at those six uh, six steps and uh, solving those steps in the exercise. So this is the in-class exercise, so have a go. It's also listed on your worksheet. Now let's return to structured equation models. So far we've been pretty basic. We've built, we can build actually more complex models. And also you should note that structured equation models can be a useful alternative for multi-level models or models where you have a time component. So for example, things where you want to model things over time, uh, which is the growth of children, for example, or the growth of a cancer or all sorts of things. These can be modeled, for example, via latent change models or latent growth curve models. And to some degree, they're quite similar uh, to uh, multi-level models where we have a time component. So I'll return a little bit to this when I talk about multi-level models. But you should just be aware that structured equation models can be a useful alternative for multi-level models with the added benefit, perhaps, that they allow you to model latent constructs. So in this case, we're going to work through an example, which is uh, the Wheaton data. And it's an older, uh, older data set, which uh, was collected by Wheaton, who used longitudinal data to develop a model for stability of alienation from 1967 to 1971, and looking at socioeconomic state status. And its uh, socioeconomic status was measured in 1966 by both educational attainment and occupational status. And he's interested in trying to model uh, anomie or alienation and uh, we have a structural component to this and a measurement component and if you want to find out more you can read it we can read here so it's a quite commonly used data set to illustrate structural creation models now the nice thing is also that we can do structural equation models straight off based on a correlation or covariance matrix so that means if people have been good researchers and have published their covariance or correlation matrices you should be able to reconstruct their models fully. And this is what we're gonna try and attempt to do with the uh, Wheaton data as well. So in order to do that, we first specify an object, which is a list, which is uh, lower, and this is how it's uh, noted. So as you might see, it has sort of a triangular structure, a lower triangle structure. And what we can do is we can get this covariance matrix and then turn it into uh, a full covariance, symmetric covariance matrix. So we can assign some names to this. And these names are based, uh, again, if you click the link, uh, you will find out more about the original Wheaton data. So we can get a covariance matrix from Lavan by this command. So it's just using this and then specifying the names. Now, this is the model uh, if you want to draw it out. So often you'll have to draw out things if you want to use structured equation models. So by, oh, by now you should be familiar that those things are errors. We have, based on the notation, we have a latent construct, which is alienation 67 and alienation 71. And we have anemia and powerlessness loading onto alienation at each time point. And we also have structural um, uh, socioeconomic status, not structural equation model. We have socioeconomic status, which is made up of educational attainment and occupational status. So this is sort of what the model is, uh, is uh, built up. And you should be able to answer this question, like which aspects of SEM does this model bring together? So please have a look at the worksheet and try to answer that question. We can build a model, so uh, we have as you will have hopefully found out, a measurement model and a structural model. And in this case, we also want to specify correlated residuals and this indirect effect, if you go back. So this indirect effect of uh, one, go, one going to the other. Oh, again, sorry, I seem to be going through this. So we have 
an indirect effect of socioeconomic status going to alienation 67 and then influencing 71. Okay. So I'll leave this for you to answer. Uh, what is missing from the diagram? So what do we have in our model but isn't specified in this diagram? So please answer that. I'll just return so we can have a look, but we have a measurement model specified like this. We have a structural model specified like this. And then we have correlated residuals and we model this indirect effect of SES on uh, the outcome, which is alienation in 71. We can then fit the model. So once we specified it, it's really quite easy to do so. We call this model alienation. We can uh, put in that it's based on a covariance matrix. And we have to specify in this case what the sample size was. And in this case, you can see it's quite sample size hungry. We have 900 people, 900 plus people, 932 to be exact. And uh, so this is how you go about specifying a model based on the covariance matrix. Again, we're sending the output somewhere else. And we're in this case, we're asking for fit measures to be true. You could also, again, based on the previous slide, ask for standardized est estimates, for example. So I won't run through all the uh, output, but I'll just give you an example of sort of what you can expect. So this is summary alienation. So you should be able to get something like this where all the variables are specified, including the indirect effect. I won't run through all of these. So some of these have been set because they're loadings. You can see that you have latent variables, you have regressions, you have covariances being modeled between anomia 67 and powerless 67 and their counterparts in 71, estimates for all the variances, and then perhaps most interested, we might be in this indirect effect, which is highly uh, significant, statistically significant. Again, you can apply all the things which you saw before, like bootstrapping and all sorts of things. And you can, again, also use model comparisons. You have fit indices here, and you can also see how the model performs in terms of uh, model fit uh, compared to other models. So in this case, one could argue that it's quite a good fit to the data because the RMCA is below 0 0.05. And we also have some other reasonable fit indices here, quite high actually, very high. And you could also request more and you could have a look at uh, other measures as well. And one could specify this model differently and then compare the fit indices based on AIC and BEC. So that's it. Let's return to the slides. We can plot that model as well. Again, this is unfortunately rendered on slides as a slightly low resolution graph. It's sort of a twisted on its head, but we have social economic status, we have educational attainment and, uh, and uh, occupational status, we have uh, alienation uh, in 67 and in 71, and you could specify, well, you could see this, uh, this uh, effect, as well as the correlated residuals between powerlessness 67 powerless 71. So this model summarizes everything. Uh, you could look at how you change the, uh, the uh, all this uh, and change the layout. Uh, and in this case, we've, uh, we've asked to put standardized effects on the output. So have a look, closer look. And again, you could look at some paths to see how you could change everything. Now I would like to try it yourself. So what happens if you remove the arrow between alien 67 and alien 71? And what happens if you remove the correlate residuals? So I'm very interested in what you would conclude if you remove these things and then uh, evaluate the fit indices and uh, do compare this to the model that we have. So you should be able to do that. So it's basically taking the original script and modifying it. So we're getting to the end. Uh, I would like you for the exercise to uh, use the following code below to generate a correlation matrix and so not a covariance matrix. So this is specifying how you would you can have a look at the code. This is specifying how you would specify a, uh, a correlation matrix, which you can then use for, uh, for Lavan 
the data are from uh, the paper you can click out here which should take you to this paper by Ingram, Cope, Harju and Wunsch uh, which is a test of the theory of plan behavior so quite relevant to psychologists and uh, it's data from uh, 131 students and for that exercise I would like you to reconstruct the model from the article Note that this model is slightly different, so there are no latent variables in this model. I'd like to discuss the fit and make a sample as we've done. And I would like to explore what happens when you remove the indirect path from that model. And that's it. I would like you uh, to uh, make that exercise and upload it onto uh, Blackboard. Here are some references and further reading. I will also point you to the reading list, which is also hosted on Blackboard, if you want to find out more about structural equation models. So that's it for now. So enjoy working with structured equation models and I look forward to seeing your exercises.